Hey guys, this is Itisha. In this video, we are going to talk about Flexbox in Tailwind CSS. So let's get started. Imagine Flexbox as a container that holds a bunch of items. This container is called as a flex container and the items in it are called as flex items. So to make this container, we need to give the parent element a class of flex and within it, the child elements are defined. The flex container consists of two invisible axes, the horizontal axis, which is called as the main axis and a vertical axis called as the cross axis. By default, on the main axis, the flex items are aligned from left to right and on the cross axis, the elements are aligned from top to bottom. So let's discuss some of the parent elements properties in Flexbox. So the first is the flex direction property, which controls the direction of the flex items. In it, the first is flex row. This is the default direction that we have. Even if we remove it, see, nothing happens. So in this one, the cross and the main axis remains the same and the items are placed on the main axis from left to right. The next is flex row reverse. In flex row reverse, the items are placed from right to left on the main axis. The next is flex column. In the flex column, the direction of the main axis and the cross axis is reversed. So now again, the play items are placed on the main axis, but the direction of main axis is vertical. And similar to flex row reverse, we have flex column reverse, in which the items are placed from bottom to top since the main axis is now vertical. The next very useful Flexbox property is justify content, which is used to position the flex items along the container's main axis. The default one is justify start, wherein the elements are positioned on the start of the main axis. The next is justify end, which wherein uh, the elements are positioned towards the end of the main axis. Then we have justify center, wherein the elements are aligned on the center of the main axis. We have justify between so that there is equal amount of space between each of the elements on the main axis. We have justify evenly so that there is an equal amount of space between the elements. And the last is justify around, which gives space so that there is an equal amount of space on each side of the flex items. There is one thing to note here. When the flex direction is set as column, the main axis become vertical. Hence, the justify content property will position the elements on the main axis that is now kept vertically. So for example, if we now give the justify center property, it will position the element on the center of the main axis. Similar to justify content, we also have align items property, which is used to position the items on the cross axis. The default one is item start, which places the items on the start of the cross axis, items end which position the items on the end and item center which places the items on the center of the cross axis and lastly we have items baseline so that the text inside each of the flex items have the same baseline. You would not be able to see any difference in here but if we have some padding in one of the elements you can observe that the base of all the text inside each of the elements is matching. There is one thing to note in here when the flex direction is set as column the cross axis become horizontal and all the properties are now applied horizontally instead of vertically. The next is flex wrap property. Let's add some more elements in here and see what happens. Irrespective of the width they are fitted on the same line. So the default one is flex no wrap so that the elements are not carried over to the next line. But if we set it as flex wrap, the elements are carried over to the next line whenever the margin is reached. And also there is another property called as flex wrap reverse, which re wraps the items in a reverse direction. So whenever we have multiple rows in a flex, a new property become available to us, which is called as align content, which is used to position the multiple rows in a flex on the cross axis. Remember, this is different from align items as align content property becomes only available whenever we have flex wrap in Flexbox. So the first one is content start, which packs the rows on the start of the cross axis. Content end, it packs the rows and places them on the end of the cross axis. Content center places the rows on the center of the cross axis. So before discussing the rest, let's add some more elements in here to see the rest of the properties more clearly. The next up we have content between which gives equal amount of space in between the flex rows. Also we have content evenly which gives e even spaces in between the flex rows and content around which gives equal amount of space on each side of the flex rows. Currently we can see there is no spacing in between the flex items but with flexbox there is another property that is used to give the gap between the elements that is called as the gap property. So I can simply write gap hyphen and give the tailwind unit. So if I say give four units of tailwind that means 16 pixels or one rem. Remember this gap property gives spacing in between the rows as well as columns but if you want to just give 
the spacing individually to the flex rows and flex column. You can use gap hyphen x to give the spacing in between the columns and gap hyphen y to give the spacing in between the rows of the flex. Now let's discuss some of the child element properties in Flexbox. So the first one is align self property, which is used to align the child element individually on the cross axis. So the default value that is given is self start in which the child element is placed on the start of the cross axis. We have self end which places this particular item to the end of the cross axis. We can give it to multiple elements as well. Also we have self center property which place this particular child element in the center of the cross axis. Now even if we give the different property to the parents, let's say items end which places the items on the end of the cross axis, the self center property is overriding the placement that is given in the parent that is items end. Another useful child element property is the grow property which defines the ability of a child element to grow if necessary. So the default value is grow zero which do not allow any el child element to grow if required and take up the rest of the space. So even if we expand the screen you can see that the size remains the same. But if we set it as grow in tailwind then what happens all the remaining space is taken up by this element. And if we define it in multiple elements then the space will be distributed accordingly. So if we define it in all the elements then all the remaining space will be distributed equally to all the child elements. Just like grow, we also have a shrink property. With shrink, we can define how fast an element should shrink when the screen size is reduced or say more elements are added or even prevent any items from shrinking at all. So the default value in Tailwind is shrink, which allows the items to shrink if required. So if we reduce the screen size, you can see that the elements are shrink. But we can also set it as shrink zero, which won't allow this particular element to shrink at all. So if we now reduce the screen size, you can see that its height and width remains the same. So the last is the order property. With the order property, we can give a different order to the flex items. For example, I can give this a order of four, this order of three, this order of one and this order of say two. Then now the first element is blue, the second is purple, third is red and the fourth one is green. This property is really very useful when we are building responsive websites and we want the flex items to take different order on different breakpoints. And this brings us to the end of this video. Now you know almost all of the important properties in Flexbox. I would highly recommend you to try out all of these on flex direction column as well in order to understand how these properties behave when the cross axis and the main axis are reversed. And if you like this video and want a similar one on grid or want a demo project on using flexbox, do let me know in the comment section. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to this channel for more such videos in future.